In this video, we'll look at Lesson 1, Chapter 12, Linear Regression and Correlation. We're going to examine relationships between two variables. For example, linear regression and correlation can help you determine if an auto mechanic's salary is related to his work experience. Linear is not the only type of correlation that you can use in statistical analysis. In this course, we will focus specifically on linear correlation, but we should be aware that there are other types. For instance, you may have data that fits an exponential pattern, and the regression might be best as an exponential regression using something that has a general form y equals b to the power of x. You could have a quadratic pattern in your data, which would be best fit by an equation that's quadratic, in general, y equals a times x to the power of 2 plus b times x plus c, where a, b, and c are some constants. Then we have the linear pattern, and you may remember the equation y equals mx plus b when you took algebra, where m is the slope, meaning the steepness of the line, and b is the y-intercept, where the line crosses the y-axis, or in other words, where x equals 0. And there are other forms of the equation. When you're in statistics, you might see it written this way, where the y-intercept is b sub 0. And you can remember that because it's where the y-axis um, the y-axis has the value x equals 0, or the equation y equals 0. Or you could think of it as, before x is introduced, where would we start? And then b sub 1 would be the slope. Or you may even see it like this, y equals a plus bx, where a is the y-intercept and b is the slope. Let's talk about different types of linear correlation or linear patterns in general. Recall that lines read from left to right just like words. So if you have a positive, um, in this case, remember a plus bx is what we're using here. So b represents the slope in this notation. So if your slope is greater than 0, or in other words, positive, the lines go upward from left to the right. All right, so increasing. And if b is equal to 0, your slope is 0. You don't have any slope. It's just constant. It's just flat. Then we say it's horizontal. And if your slope is negative or less than 0, the line slopes downward. It's decreasing. The linear correlation coefficient r measures the strength of the linear correlation between two variables. So when we're making a trend line, before we put that trend line on there, we want to determine if there's enough linear strength. Or after we put it on there, we can determine if the strength is high enough too. But we won't want to use the model for making any kind of estimations unless it's a good fit or a good enough fit. And so positive correlation we can see here has an uphill trend where x as x goes up, so does y. And negative is as x goes up, the y values are going down. And then 0, there's no change in y when x changes. So in other words, x is not really doing anything to our y values. So we wouldn't need a linear model for that. A scatter plot for part a showing positive correlation where your correlation coefficient would be between 0 and 1. So what that means is positive and less than 1. So our values will be anywhere between negative 1 and positive 1, where positive 1 would be perfect linear correlation in the positive direction, and negative 1 would be negative correlation, perfect linear correlation to the negative with a negative slope. And then we have the zero in the middle. So let's look at some examples. This one is moderately strong. 
So to try to think of what the R correlation could be out of these choices, and these are just made up estimations to, to give us something to, to think about here. So from left to right, it's increasing and it's somewhat strong, so it should be somewhat close to positive one. So the best option is C. This one is moderately weak, and you can see it's going downhill. So they're kind of loose. There is some linear trend there, but it's not very strong. It's not very well formed, and it's going downhill. So which one of these would you think is the best option here? Right, so obviously B or C, since they're both negative, B is a little too strong or maybe a lot too strong for what we see here, so the best option is C. All right, this one is clearly very, very weak, and so the best option would be something that's close to zero. Okay, so looking at these examples, you can see that there's a pretty strong correlation, linear correlation specifically, and so there would be a positive slope and also a positive linear correlation coefficient close to positive one. In this example, we have negative trend that's strong, so we would see a negative slope on the regression line, and also our correlation coefficient r would be negative and close to negative one. Now keep in mind your slope and your regression, excuse me, your slope of your regression line and your correlation coefficient will share the same sign, but they are not the same thing. One measures linear strength and the other gives us a steepness, right? So the R is telling us how tight the points are to fitting a line pattern, and the slope tells us how steep this decline, this declining, <laughs> this de I can't seem to get the words out. Yeah, so it tells us the steepness, you know, it could be less steep than that and still have strong linear correlation. And for this one, you see negative correlation and the points are loose. So the slope will be negative and the linear correlation will be negative, but this time the R value will be closer to zero. Here we have an exponential pattern. So we might get a decent R value because this portion of this pattern at least is somewhat linear or pretty tightly linear, but over here they're not. So we'd get a like probably moderately strong linear correlation coefficient. And so then we might think that we had a good model if we never looked at the scatter plot. And it's not a good model, it wouldn't be a good fit. So it's important to look at the scatter plot as well as the R measurement to determine if you have linear correlation. And then here you see there's no pattern. So um, for the second one, you would have a slope of zero. All right, so in the next video, we're gonna calculate the linear cor correlation coefficient R in Excel. And you, we do have a formula for that, but I like you to explore with it, but I don't want you to have to do it on the test. So don't panic. You're not gonna have to do all that when you're in a testing situation. You're gonna instead use Excel and the command for that is corel with x's and y's, or, and I recommend the second option, insert a scatter plot. That way you can see the pattern of the data. And then just right click the points and click add trend line. Then check the boxes to display the R squared and the regression equation. Then all you have to do is take the square root of the R squared value, and you accomplish a lot of things by doing this. You get to see the pattern in the data to know if it even looks linear. You get to um, see the linear regression equation displayed. So you can do estimations with it. 
if it's a good model that is. You get the r squared value so you can take the square root of it and see if the linear strength is strong enough. And finally the r squared value itself is very important. It tells us how much of the variation actually as a percentage, what percentage of the changes in the y values, the response values, what percentage of that variation can be explained by the changes in x, the explanatory variable. So that's another way of assessing whether or not we have a model that's doing a good job of explaining our response variable or, or um, describing how it behaves. So I'll see you in the next video to actually go through these steps. And, um, and yeah, yep, I'll see you over there. <laughs>